Okay, everyone, I've been trying to finish this season one update thing for this game all afternoon. I started playing it on stream for those of you who came out to Luke Stevens Live and joined me. Thank you. And after playing this all afternoon, pouring hours and hours into it, I can confidently say I am already sick and tired of this game and this seasonal update. It is like the opposite of what it needed to be to save this game. And at this point, I feel insulted <laughs> that they thought this was a good product, like that they thought this was ready for consumers, that they waited two months and put off and delayed patches to fix the game until this point. I'm, I'm honestly pretty upset and I haven't even been able to finish it because it's broken for me, as it is for a lot of other players. Don't worry, we'll get to that. As always, subscribe if you like the video. We're about to hit half a million subs, and if you want to be in the first half a million, sub now. Otherwise, you're going to be in the second half, and nobody wants to be in the second half a million, so let's just take care of it now. Hit that sub button. It'll feel good, I promise. <laughs> Much better than this game. <laughs> Quick little recap, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League launched two months ago. And since it launched, there's been a handful of updates and patches to try and fix various parts of the game for players. However, there hasn't been any substantial or substantive updates or DLC released in that time. All of that was being saved for the season one update, this update right here, which was scheduled to drop March 28th of 2024. A lot of players were really excited for this and we're waiting with bated breath they took the day off of work you can look on the subreddit it's filled with people telling their stories of how much time they took off and when they were ready to go they got their snacks ready they were hyped right at midnight to play this update and part of the confusion with it came from the fact that there was no real clear communication from rocksteady on when this season update would go out so players were sitting around waiting for it and eventually they started server maintenance they shut all the servers down so that they could update everything and people were braced for like half an hour to an hour the servers ended up being down for somewhere between eight and 10 hours. It's not super clear precisely when they went down, but most people are saying about 10 hours is how long they were down, which is quite a while. But regardless, once the servers came back online, a bunch of people booted in and started playing. And this is when the first shock came. You see the promise of the Joker being freely available to players to enjoy this season through was, let's just say a little bit misleading. You see, you can technically play as as the Joker through the seasonal content, grinding up until you get to the final boss fight against Brainiac. This Brainiac fight just being a reskin of the Green Lantern fight. So if you were expecting to have a totally original fight, I'm sorry to say you're not going to get it. But setting that aside for a moment, you can technically play as the Joker through the season content, but you have to pay 10 bucks to get him. If you don't pay $10 and instead you rely on his free redemption, through gameplay exclusively, which is all that was initially described was that he'll be freely available to everybody. You're gonna have to grind. And it's it's like the worst kind of grind. It is grinding like the same three or four missions over and over and over again for an entire afternoon. It could take you four hours, it could take you 10 hours. It depends on which ones they drop you. You see, in order to redeem the Joker and get him as a playable character for free, you have to level up your fear ranking to level 35. This is sort of like a mini battle pass within this particular season of the game. So if you want the Joker, and if you want to unlock the boss fight against Brainiac wherein you save Joker, you have to get to level 35. And the only way you can get to level 35 in this mini battle pass is by going through these very particular missions, which give you points that go towards that level 35 total. These are specific missions that have a little plus one or plus two above them when you look at your big map full of all of the other missions. But here's where my problem has come. I've been playing this game all afternoon miserably while I do it. I would much rather be out with my family right now going to a park or something. But instead, I've been playing through these missions over and over and over again all afternoon. 
And as I've gone through them, I initially started with the missions that would reward two levels roughly worth of points when you completed them. These would take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, just depends on kind of the layout and how things work out. And then I started going to the plus one missions, which reward you basically one level of the uh, special mini battle pass each time they're completed. And these can take five to 10 minutes a piece if you factor in the travel time to get to the destination where the mission starts. And I thought it was weird that the plus two missions stopped showing up after like an hour of this grind. But I was like, yeah, they'll probably just pop up once I've cleared out some of the plus one missions that have spawned. Well, they didn't. And so I had another hour and a half roughly of grinding of just these like little mini missions that were plus one. And usually they weren't actually a full level. It was like 75% of a level. I don't know if it's like glitching. I don't know if the scaling is off, but in the last 20 minutes, they've just stopped spawning for me. So I have the other regular missions available, which are the like bigger Elseworld missions that you've probably seen in the promotional materials. And they're just the same end game missions from before, but now they're in an Elseworld that has like some Joker posters on the walls and they might have buildings replaced with big boxes that look like presents. And that's about it. It's just the same stuff over and over and over again except those as far as i can tell don't directly contribute to the fear level battle pass thing so you can use those to grind up and level up the regular battle pass or the premium battle pass but they don't affect this mini battle pass if this sounds overly confusing and unnecessarily complicated you are not alone that's about right. The point is, I currently have no way of leveling up that pass to get to that final Brainiac boss fight. So I can't even see the end of the season until they refresh the servers or issue some sort of patch fixing whatever my problem happens to be. But honestly, I'm already so burnt out on this that I have zero interest in finishing it. Now, you've probably noticed in the gameplay that you've seen on screen, I'm playing as the Joker. That's because today on stream, somebody donated 10 bucks and was like, please, dear God, don't grind all the way for the Joker. We just want to see if he's worth working for and grinding for. And after we put it up to a vote, over 75% of viewers, we had like 1,200 people in there were like, please, dear God, don't grind this out. Just do it. So I took the burden of paying 10 bucks to get the Joker ahead of time. Don't do as I do. Don't. It's not worth it. <laughs> While his movement is really cool and his animation set is extremely tight and wildly impressive for a live service co-op game like this, it's just not enough to justify hours and hours of grinding the same missions which were boring before season one dropped and are even more boring now. And it's all the more baffling when you consider that Rocksteady was fully aware that the biggest complaint people had about this game prior to its launch and after its launch was that the engagement variety seemed to be extremely repetitive. Enemy variety was non-existent and once we got our hands on the game and played through it we realized that the campaign was only about 10 hours long but it was built off of two and a half hours of content barely. At its core Suicide Squad is a game that's held back by a lack of content, a lack of variety, and a lack of interesting enemies to fight and engage with. As fun as the joke Joker is to move around and to control, it just doesn't change the core problem. It doesn't do anything to address it. Suicide Squad is still a boring, repetitive mess, whether you are playing as King Shark, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, or the Joker. It doesn't matter because the activities you're engaging with are identical. And like, I get it, they needed to find a way to keep players engaged, to keep them playing the season one update as long as they could. So instead of just giving you the Joker and being like, okay, go have fun, go have fun, do all these missions and then fight Brainiac, they decided to make Joker the reward for the grind of the season one update. And a lot of players are pretty peeved about it. If you go to the subreddit right now, you can see posts like this absolute disaster who thought it was a smart idea to lock joker behind mastery 35 to be clear it's not mastery 35 it's this secondary or i guess tertiary battle pass that's separate from the others so it's not your mastery rank it's not your regular rank it's a separate thing you have to grind for which 
while that's also relieving because mastery levels are insanely difficult to grind it's still just one more thing to grind because that's just what this game is the only reason they did this was so that you would pay for them and it's true i mean that's pretty much the entire reason for it and you see like some people that say i don't really care that it's like this but they really should have warned everyone that that's how the unlock was going to go and this was made worse because there were some data miners that dug into the game's files and thought they found that the joker unlock was like the first mission that you do so you load into the new season there's going to be cutscenes. there's going to be some narrative stuff and then you get the joker you go and grind the whole thing and then you fight brainiac and then you have a little bit more grind in the end game after that but instead all of the grind is front loaded it seems like once you unlock the joker you're just going to be back to the same old end game grind that you had before that everybody was upset about so you're grinding for a character that then you can engage with boring content with it just doesn't make any sense it's like giving somebody a really fancy car like a lamborghini and being like okay but you can't drive it you can like look at it or if you want to drive it you can like go back and forth six inches and then reverse six inches back and forth in the garage but you can't drive it like you're going to be bored out of your minds but you have a really cool car so you should be thanking us right like it doesn't make any sense you're rewarding players with a new character to play in these missions with but you're not allowing them to play with that character in the new missions and in the missions that you allegedly think greatly improve the game it just doesn't make any sense at all and a lot of people are pretty peeved about it because they were hoping to boot up the game and be able to play as the joker immediately and they are not a streamer they're not a youtuber they don't have people tossing 10 bucks to them begging them to just buy it so they don't have to sit through the grind and so they're having to go through the motions of doing all of it and naturally they're pretty peeved that this wasn't communicated i think again if rocksteady just came out and was like hey guys it's the reward for the season joker is something you're working towards it's kind of the the big old golden egg at the end of the uh at the end of the season i think people would have understood they might have been frustrated but they would have understood and at least appreciated the transparency but now a lot of people are just pissed that they are working to grind for something and then they're going to have a cool new toy that they can't really use for anything interesting and unfortunately other people are going to end up in the same spot I am where the game just kind of breaks because it doesn't issue you enough of these very specific missions you need to grind this level up to unlock the Joker so you're just gonna spend two three hours bored out of your mind grinding these levels only to realize that the game is just broken and then isn't gonna give you any more of them it, it just doesn't make any sense and listen there's other baffling things about it the fact that there's basically no narrative until you finish this whole thing with Brainiac and you get to the end game at that point there's a cutscene that plays basically but there really is not any narrative component to this season it's like you just load in you go to a new realm that's like Joker themed it's a new world basically that Brainiac is is taking over and terraforming and everything and then you just start playing the same game nothing's really changed there's some new loot and stuff but like that's it and then you're expected to just grind for hours recruit joker and then just keep grinding like nothing happened after another cutscene plays it's really really odd i thought surely they were going to like come in here with a series of cutscenes and then set this stuff up and have a more interesting narrative but there really is just nothing here and it just reaffirms the most damning aspect of suicide squad kill the justice league which is that it's like it's not even bad it's a step short of bad it's a view it's leaps short of bad because there's just so little here that you can't even really pick it apart you can't even really dissect it because it feels like a dlc for another game it feels like an expansion for another live service game that's actually good it doesn't even feel like a complete game by itself which is why it's all the more insulting that it's 70 dollars it's all the more insulting that this game waited two months to issue this seasonal update and there's basically nothing here it's just baffling especially when you consider that this was in the works for at least seven years like what on earth were they doing and what have they been doing in preparation for this it's amazing to me you guys know that i've covered this game a lot we've talked about it a ton on this main channel also on my live streams on my live channel 
it's something I've wanted to keep an eye on because I really love and respect Rocksteady as a development studio. They made some of my favorite games of all time. And the reason I played Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League at launch on stream live for all of you was because I wanted to give it a fair chance. And when it was quite lacking, I told you guys all about it, but part of me was still hoping that they would be able to pull this off, that they would be able to come around at the end of this with this season one update and it was going to blow us all away and they were going to show everybody, yeah, the reason the core game was really lacking in content is because all of it is right here. Look at it. I was really hoping something like that would happen. But unfortunately, season one is just an insultingly anemic collection of systems built around grinding and wasting your time and such a lack of creativity that it makes you wonder if the people that put this game together were held at gunpoint. It's amazing to me that anybody thought that this game was ready for prime time. And it really makes me curious what this game was like two years ago when it was originally slated to launch like no joke in case you forgot this game as you see this article was updated march 23rd of 2022 two years ago they said that they were delaying the game to spring of 2023 and then it was delayed again to spring well, i guess like late winter of 2024. it's just stunning like what was this game like in 2022 when they initially were scheduled for release like i can only imagine if there's this little content now what was it like back then where they're like oh yeah this is a problem they thought this was good enough what was it like back then oh man the last thing i should probably touch on is the elephant in the room which is the monetization and everything like that this season update is free you don't have to pay for it there's no added cost to it if you bought the base game for 70 or got it on sale in the weeks after you now get season one included with your purchase which i think is awesome yes you have to grind a lot for the joker through some of the most boring and tedious missions i've played and i played through the whole base game but if you can stomach it you can get access to the joker for free when you go over to the in-game store you'll be greeted with a handful of different skins an option to buy the premium battle pass and also a bunch of paid emotes if you want interestingly there is a section in the store that we found on stream where you can purchase emotes that are currently discounted 50 percent even though this is the first day that they're available it's really weird it's like four emotes of the joker doing weird like movements and stuff and they say it's worth 17 dollars in the in-game currency but they're gonna offer it to you at half price. How generous. <laughs> but the reason I bring this up is because it reminds me of the Fallout 76 scandal and honestly debacle that happened back in 2018, at least one of them, uh, where they were offering items available for sale that they listed as being half off. So you're like, wow, what a discount. When they were never actually offered for 2,400 credits, but they put it at 1200, which was the actual price, saying it was half off to make you think you were getting a half off deal, to make you think you were saving money, when in reality, you were just paying the full price. It would be like if Apple took an iPhone and on launch day, they were like, yes, this is a $2,400 phone that's half off for only 1200. See, you're saving money if you buy it right now. And then they never actually sell it at $2,400. They just sell it at $1,200, but they try to make you think that you're saving a ton of money. The reason that's a problem is because that's freaking illegal. <laughs> like in every country that I know of, it's not okay. Back when I worked in retail at Best Buy, we would have to go through, I think it was every Sunday, if I remember right, and make sure all of the signage for all of the TVs or laptops, whatever we were in charge of at the time, we had to make sure all of those sales signs were swapped out because you couldn't have one TV, for example, on sale perpetually because it broke these rules around discounts. You can't have false price anchoring. You can't have false sales to trick people or lie to them and make them think they're getting something at a discount when that's just what it costs. That's not okay. <laughs> like You can get in huge trouble for this. And when I saw that Kill the Justice League has in their store packs and items that are available at half off on launch day, it reminded me an awful lot of all this stuff with Fallout 76. And they should be very, very careful because if they're not, they're going to get a knock at their door from, uh, from a lawyer or a regulator. And 
they're going to have a bad day, a, ba a worse day, a, a badder day than they are currently having, which I'm sure is not a great one. So I would, uh, I would encourage them to maybe do some homework and make sure they're not breaking laws by, uh, by doing this. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know for a fact if this is breaking laws as it currently stands, but it sure smells stinky to me. So all of this to say, I am really disappointed with season one of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I am honestly baffled that they've put off fixing, like matchmaking. They just did that like last night or two days ago in preparation for this, but they put that off for two months to prepare season one. And this is what it is. And even then there are still bugs and glitches and things that happen. We had multiple instances while playing on stream today where certain enemies could not take damage. Certain like turret type items couldn't take damage. There was another situation where I was swinging through the city and certain items and objects just don't have hit detection. So you just clip through them. So even then it's not a fully polished game and it still drops frames like crazy in certain spots where it goes from 60 down to like the low 40s, even down to the 20s in a couple spots for a couple of seconds at a time. It's just a disaster no matter which way you look at it. But you know what? I think this clip perfectly describes what this game is. I was standing here on a ledge just talking with chat. And then I noticed that Harley was doing something a little weird. And Daniel in our chat, an OG of the Luke Stevens channel from all the way back years and years and years ago, he made a comment, which I thought was pretty accurate. I don't know what Harley's doing. What is this? This is literally indicative of the entire gameplay experience. Just doing the same move over and over. <laughs> Harley's meta. I think you're right, Banana Brains. I think you're right. This is painfully symbolic of <laughs> the Suicide Squad as a whole. Oh man, this is precisely the thing. And meanwhile, the Joker's yawning at the same time. <laughs> She's doing the same thing over and over again and he can't help but yawn. Harley is the perfect encapsulation of everything wrong with this game. It's a repetitive mess that expects something different to happen after you just keep doing the same exact motions time and time again. It, it just doesn't matter how many times you do it. She keeps trying. We stood there for like 10 minutes and she just kept trying to walk into me, seeing if the 1500th time it was going to let her walk past me. And that is precisely what this game is. It expects you to just do the same missions over and over and over and over and over again and at some point they think something's gonna happen and you'll start having fun. And it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> Especially when the game breaks and doesn't let you finish the seasonal content that they even uh, put forward as boring as it was. I, I don't think I'm gonna go back to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I've seen the data mind reports of what the next playable characters are going to be. I've heard rumors about some of the updates and things that they're gonna be doing to try and boost player numbers. And I just don't find it particularly impressive or interesting. And this game is one of those where the more I play, the worse I feel. And it like slowly sucks my soul out through my thumbs. You know, some games are like that. It could be, could be some like Starfield does that to me. I think Suicide Squad's doing it to me. It's sucking my soul through my thumb in the joystick such that it it's turning necrotic and it's sucking my life force out. So I'm just going to, uh, to call it here. I don't think I'll go back to it. Even if they issue a patch and make it so I can finish the Brainiac fight, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to because I've fought Green Lantern before and uh, I don't really need the reskin to tell me how good it is. So I'm just going to call it there. Thank you for watching. I love you all dearly. If you appreciate my misery in pushing through and playing more of this, uh, subscribe. I'll guilt trip you that way into subscribing. <laughs> is, it, is it working? <laughs> but okay. Thank you for watching. I love you all dearly. Don't bother with this. Um, certainly don't spend $10 on the Joker. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Have a wonderful day, my friends. I love you all dearly and desperately. And I'll see you in the next video. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye. Don't worry, it's totally water. <laughs>